Contrast has been getting a lot of bad press in the recent months and suffered more from the pandemic than any other airline in the world. The Australian flag carrier is in crisis, many aviation lovers told me. It surprises me because I always considered Qantas as one of the best airlines in the world. So I booked myself on one of the airline's longest flights from Sydney all the way to Johannesburg, which is also the most sudden and isolated flight in the world. So let's see how good or bad Qantas really is these days. I spent a couple of days down under trying out some new airlines, such as Rex Airlines new 737 from Sydney to Melbourne and it was a pretty decent experience, as well as flying Australia's latest budget airline Bonsa from Melbourne to the Sunshine Coast. I was very impressed how great and efficient carrier they are. So overall, it didn't really look as if the aviation sector was in crisis, as many have told me. So I was rather hopeful that my flight today was going to be just as good. So and here we are all checked in for 14 hour economy class adventure to Johannesburg. What was I thinking? <laughs> Sydney to Johannesburg is currently the only flight between Australia and mainland Africa. And this flight is always overbooked. So today was no difference. But thanks to my frequent flyer status, at least I have lounge access. And I was told upon check-in that the flight is packed. No blocked middle seat, nothing. It's gonna be a tough one today. Thanks to my One World status, I was allowed to make use of the Qantas Business Class Lounge, which is a pretty decent place with a great breakfast buffet and beverages. It's also a good place to wind down a bit and get yourself prepared for a 14 hour flight in economy class that travels over the ocean for a good 12 hours. The lounge also offers a beautiful view on the Sydney skyline. However, it was then time for me to make my way to the gate and get a first glimpse of today's plane, the 787 Dreamliner. So that concludes my quick visit to the lounge, but now let's go back to reality, the economy class reality. <laughs> so guys, here we are, made it to the gate. The 787 Dreamliner is it ready to take me to Johannesburg. Um, fun fact, I've been on this flight actually twice, but back in the days it was still operated by the 747, the queen of the skies, which Qantas unfortunately retired during the pandemic. And uh, usually when you fly 14 hours in economy class, there's a few travel hacks that you can do. You can like check the seat map every day, pick a seat in the back, hope that you get a road to yourself, or at least um, a free middle seat, or even up on check-in, you can ask very friendly uh, the agent whether they are able to block we a middle seat. We will be boarding American Flight 72 to Los Angeles by welcoming our concierge key customers to board now, or any time during the boarding process through the priority lane. All right, American Airlines, nobody cares. <laughs> so, so up and check-in, you can ask um, the staff uh, to like get you a row or block a middle seat. And if the flight isn't too busy, so most of the time they're happy to do that if you ask nicely, yeah? Don't be a dickhead. <laughs> but yeah, that also didn't work because the flight is packed. So today it's gonna be a tough one. So I hope there's a tiny person sitting next to me and that the flight somehow turns out to be comfortable. But this is the reality. It's the reality of traveling in the back. And most of my flights are in economy, the majority of them. And it applies to you guys as well. Most of us travel in the back and uh, I'm like still very keen to explore all those economy class products so we can create a great comparison with the other airlines. And uh, it's fun, it can be fun. A good economy class product can be heaps of fun uh, if it all works out. But let's see, like really, what it's like today. That's what I like. I don't know what to expect. Maybe there's the nicest person on earth sitting next to me. I create great friendship, make a new friend. You never know what it has in store for you. So I'm trying to remain positive here. 
and I'm actually I'm very excited to go back to South Africa, a country I very much like, adore. It's a great place. The good food there, and very no lovely people. It's a good place. All right, enough set. Let's do this. Let's go to Johannesburg. Hi, how are you? Good. Thank you. I was done time to board the 787-9 Dreamliner, of which Qantas operates 14. I've traveled on it once before in business class from Melbourne to San Francisco in 2018, and it was a pretty decent product. But now, let's check out the economy class cabin. Hi, how are you? How are you? Good. Thank you so much. Welcome aboard. Just behind me, Jackie. And here we are, welcome on board our flight to Johannesburg. The cabin features 42 seats in business class, 28 in premium economy and 166 in a 333 configuration in economy class. You would probably think Qantas offers a more generous seat pitch than other airlines due to the numbers of long haul flights, but unfortunately that is not the case. My first impression of the crew, they were very nice and the cabin looked clean and organized. So I was very hopeful that this is going to be a very comfortable journey. So guys, and here we are. Welcome on board the 787 Dreamliner of Qantas, their flagship, taking me all the way to Johannesburg on, as I mentioned, probably 50,000 times already, 14 hours. Um, first impression, lovely crew, uh, neat and tidy cabin. But let me give you a quick little seat intro. I gotta be honest, the seats are pretty awesome. You have a huge screen in front of you and heaps of storage space for all your little gadgets. Each seat comes with a universal power outlet as well as a USB slot. I found a little amenity kit at the seat with all the basics you need for a long journey. There is also a blanket and a pillow as well as headphones and a water bottle. Also the entertainment options were brilliant and plenty of movies were available. Definitely something you need for a 14 hour flight. However, Qantas Dreamliners don't have internet, so you'd be looking at a nice social media detox on your flight. Overall, it was definitely one of the better economy class seats you will find in the industry. Today's video is sponsored by Surfshark VPN, a must-have tool for any traveler and freaking flyer. By using a VPN, you surf the internet safe and anonymously, especially when using public Wi-Fi. And you get around censorship all around the world. Whether you want to use Instagram in China, use WhatsApp calls in Dubai, or consume TikTok in India. Or watch adult movies in the Middle East. And it also works on all your devices. But let me show you my favorite park. Finding cheaper flight deals by changing my IP address to a low-income country, saving me plenty of dollars every year. But also, as a huge sport fan, I can watch my favorite football team from all around the world or access different libraries on Netflix by using Surfshark VPN. So, and by using the link in the description box below or using the code Josh Cahill, you will get three additional months for free which is an absolute great offer so go check it out and now let's go back to the review so but after all the whining <laughs> at the gate about uh, having a full flight perhaps i'm very lucky and there's a no show you never know right fingers crossed I think we can all agree that Qantas has by far the best safety video of all airlines and it always makes me a little bit emotional as well. What do you think? Which video is your favorite? Let me know in the comments. Afterwards, we made our way to the runway for an on-time departure, overlooking the beautiful Sydney Bay with its iconic opera house and the Harbour Bridge. Ooh. 
instead of handing out menus, they loaded it onto the in-flight entertainment right in front of you, and it didn't take long for the first snack to be served. We were offered some carrots and celery sticks, as well as drinks. The snacks were pretty decent. Not long after, the crew came around again to offer some hot choices. I decided to go for the beef steak with mashed potatoes. It was an absolute quality meal. So once again, no complaints at all. After the meal, the crew came around and handed out ice cream, which was once again very lovely. What's my routine on a long haul flight though? Usually I download hours and hours of podcasts that I want to listen to, mostly about sports and politics since I found these to be very interesting topics to listen to. If I happen to have a spare middle seat or even a road to myself in economy class, I love to edit videos, since I'm most productive if I don't have an internet connection. I also try to consume as much water as possible to stay hydrated, however that isn't a good idea if you happen to get a window seat. There's nothing more annoying than really needing to go to the loo, but you need to wake up your seat neighbor. Some get very angry when you disrupt their sleep. After the meal service, I listened to a few podcasts and decided to sleep, which worked out just fine. However, after roughly 7 hours, I could feel the pain in my knees and it was then time for me to squeeze in a little walk and stretch. I spent a good half an hour in the galley before heading to the toilet for the infamous Lou review. So, welcome from the Lou. We are... yeah roughly seven hours into the flight and uh, I'm actually feeling still very good. The seat is rather comfortable. I have uh, really lovely people sitting next to me so um, it's not too bad. There's also a bit of a snack box in the in the back of the galley here so I, I stocked up on some Tim Tams, uh, cheese and crackers and uh, some water. Uh, the blanket is top-notch, the uh, uh, pillow is very comfortable, so overall this is a pretty decent economy class product given that the flight is full. Obviously you have to get up sometimes, stretch your legs, um, but other than that um, it's, it's pretty good. The crew is very present as well in the cabin, they come around, they offer drinks, uh, so like it's pretty pretty impressive for what it is <laughs> of course if you ask me I'd rather be sitting in the in the front especially on a day flight where you can really indulge and uh, get some work done uh, but other than that I am a very satisfied customer here and uh, yeah it's a, it's a good flight it's a really good flight and uh, yeah this is what a loo looks like if you've been wondering nothing special but it's clean and that's what we want, right? All right, I guess uh, we'll talk to you guys uh, later when they serve a dinner and then uh, once we're on the ground in Johannesburg. Once I returned to my seat, I made use of the in-flight entertainment and watched a four-hour documentary about the Islamic revolution in Iran, which was highly entertaining, especially for someone who has traveled Iran for a couple of times. Also, another snack was served by the crew. I found the crew to do a great job and they have been showing constant presence in the cabin instead of hiding in the galley as many airlines do these days. That's something I've really appreciated and really improves the customer experience. Two hours prior to landing in Johannesburg, another meal was served and this time I went for the chicken parma with sweet potato mash. Once again, it was very filling and of great quality as far as I was concerned. But it was also the moment I realized that traveling for almost 12 hours by now is taking quite a toll on your body and especially your airways. I was very much looking forward to arriving at my destination. 45 minutes prior to arrival, the captain finally started our descent into Joburg. Imagine the world's longest flight is almost 18 hours. That would be another 4 hours airborne. No thanks.
great thing about an afternoon arrival in South Africa means that you barely have any international arrivals and you literally fly through immigration since the majority of flights arrive in the morning. Standing in line after a 14 hour flight is definitely not fun and I'm glad my bag was the first to arrive as well. Welcome to Johannesburg. Once I grabbed my bag, I made my way to the arrival area and called myself an Uber, which would take me to the city, a drive that takes around half an hour. While in South Africa, I will fly Air Link and South African Airways, two videos you can look forward to as well, so hit that subscribe button right now. Here we are, welcome to the Marriott. And uh, what a long day it was, it was tough, <laughs> um, but good. Uh, Qantas offers a very decent um, economy class product, among the top in the world for sure. Great seat, good food, great crew, and uh, overall it was as good as it can be 14 hours in economy i am though exhausted beyond so um <laughs> gonna finish this uh this review right now because i gotta go sleep i gotta rest because i need a proper sleep but uh also check out my patreon page if you want to join my whatsapp group um support my work, get the Cahill Keering uh, link is in the description box below and this is it. <laughs> I am out. <laughs> Over and out. See you guys.